everyone. Welcome to our latest Trade of Black podcast. Thanks for checking in. I'm your host, Shad Dales. Better late than never. Thank you for the patience. It's 4.15, but here we go live today. What a day it was on the market. Florida, we saw some great news on Monday and everything makes sense in this space, right? Not really. Cannabis stocks in the Canadian side have obviously done a huge, huge rebound. And a lot of companies, I should, should say, in the actual market here today, Saw some big growth, including Canopy, Aurora, and a few others in SNDL. But the most important reason why you want to listen to this podcast here today, we want to get an update on rescheduling and safe banking, where that sits. And there's no better source of information than Congresswoman Nancy Mace. She'll be joining us. So let's jump right into it. Welcome in TDR co-host Anthony Varel. Good to see you. How are things? This see should you. be an interesting podcast, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to jump into this one. This will be, uh, be a good one. It will be. So without further ado, let's welcome in South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mays. First time to the podcast. Great to have you on. And it's a pleasure to meet you. How are things? Things are very wet and dreary and rainy in Charleston, South Carolina. That's fake you know, background. It's not this sunny out right now. Uh, it's torrential rain pour today, but I'm excited to talk cannabis with you all today. There's I, actually quite a bit to talk about. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. First off, I know it's been recessed the last couple of weeks. You getting any mm -hmm. downtime or is the campaign season and very busy for you? Well, when you're in a purple district and you have a primary every two years and then a general election every two years, it's very busy. I don't get a day off. A lot of members get to go on vacation or go on trips. Not Nancy Mace. We don't get to do that. We It's, it's spring break, but I'm at work. <laughs> Everything you imagine about growing up and what you wanted to do, right? Right. No, exactly. You know, I love the job. Honestly, I do love it. I love being able to deliver results for my state, for my district, for my nation, and be able to lead on issues that are really important to voters. We're yeah. seeing, especially when it comes to cannabis, that this movement has been huge. It's been huge over the last decade. Even conservative states have gotten in on the cannabis game and want to see it legalized in their states. They don't like prohibition. And so there's just so much that I've been working on the last couple of years to really be proud of. Are you surprised at all on based on the general like interest and level of topic of conversation that this space has generated since you started advocating for it? Yeah. And, you know, every town hall I have, it almost comes up in every town hall, whether really? I'm, somebody asks a question about it. When are we rescheduling? What are we doing? Safe banking. When is South Carolina going to get medical? Because yeah. they've been yeah. working on medical for eight years. Hopefully this will be the year that it happens. Yeah. But um, it's a constant topic of mine. And quite frankly, a year or two ago, Winthrop University did a poll and 53% of South Carolinians in bright red conservative South Carolina want to see recreational cannabis in the state. And then yeah. for medical, it's even higher, 75 to 80% statewide. Yeah. My district, the numbers are going to be higher than that. But this was statewide like two years ago. So yeah. I mean, even red states are like, well, what are we doing here? And why isn't this? Why don't we have this here yet? Yeah, lots of change. And I think there's more and more awareness and education, I think, is really mm -hmm. happening. But I first want to begin because there's lots to dive into about, you know, you getting involved pertaining to the industry. As you said, mm -hmm. you're from South Carolina, a state that hasn't legalized medical or adult news yet. But here you are advocating for the industry. So when you got into cannabis, like, how did you get involved and why are you so passionate about it? I got involved in 2018 when I became a state lawmaker. I was sworn into the into office for the first time, and I worked with State Senator Tom Davis on his medical marijuana legislation. To me, it was a no-brainer. I was representing a portion of the state that very much wanted to see medical and recreational, by the way. And, you know, but my story with cannabis starts long before that. Um, if you watch the George Stephanopoulos interview, you'll yeah. know that I was I was raped at the age of 16 yeah. and I dropped out of high school shortly thereafter. And at the time it was grueling. It was traumatic. I, I struggled quite a bit. And I went to I had a therapist. I was diagnosed with depression and I refused to get out of bed and go to school. And it was really mm -hmm. hard for me to get out of bed and go to work. But I eventually had to you know, be an adult at a very young age and, and face my trauma. But my doctor prescribed me antidepressants at the time. Okay. This one Prozac was very new, very new on the market, and it made my depression worse and mm. actually it made me kind of suicidal. Wow. And I just had all these uh, ideations that were really unhealthy. And I was like, this isn't me. Like, this isn't, I know I'm down. I know I'm facing trauma and I'm going to therapy. I'm doing all these things. But gosh, I, I, I just, it wanted me to, it made, it made me feel like I wanted to end it all. And so I stopped taking the prescription drugs from my doctor and I started using cannabis. I obviously don't recommend it at, at, at that age, but I used cannabis. 
um, for about a year in my life, I could function. I got out of bed. I got a job. I finished, I finished high school. Yeah. It really, it changed the landscape for me. And I realized yeah. that this is just a plant and it can help people. It can save lives. I've since met so many people, whether it's an epilepsy patient, patient, someone with Parkinson's, somebody, someone with cancer or terminal illness, where it has helped them. A couple of years ago, I was in a, it was in a car accident. I um, was eventually prescribed opioids about six weeks in. I had a fractured rib and addiction, drug addiction runs in my family. It runs in yeah. a lot of people's families. In fact, there's, mm -hmm. an, there are, there's an overdose of opioids in, um, in our family as well in that history, family history. And I, last thing I wanted to do was to get on, get on opioids. Well, I did, you know, yeah. gummies for a very short period of time in a state where it was legal. And I was able for a few weeks, uh, stop using it. Everything, everything healed. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it did, but you know, those are the experiences that I've had personally. And then when I talk to people on the campaign trail, I talk to people in the office that come by and they tell me their life-saving stories. It's not for everybody. Um, but for a lot of people it can do a lot of good. I've talked yeah. to doctors. I mean, there's just so many good story after story after story of how it's saved lives. Applaud you and have a ton of respect for your yeah. courage. I really have, I think speaking on on behalf of Anthony too, like, again, appreciate you taking the time to speak to us, but just yeah. hearing your story, we have a lot of respect and uh, obviously encourage, or should say applaud you for your courage that you provided, not only for yourself, but just people mm -hmm. that I'm sure can probably relate to some of your story, but uh, mm -hmm. amen to, to you, your family, and everybody that's uh, obviously been through something like that. Anthony, I know you wanted to ask a few questions mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, so I mean, you've been integral and key in key legislation, in key pieces of legislation in regards to cannabis, States mm -hmm. Act, Cure Act, Safe. Um, your story obviously resonates. I mean, that was a very authentic mm -hmm. va validation of the plant. Yeah, with so much powerful evidence that we have, especially with like the HHS recommendation that we just saw, what is standing in the way of cannabis reform? Mm -hmm. um in, in 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 washington because i mean from a you, you said it yourself that the only place that cannabis it, it's not a direct quote but the only place cannabis was an issue or a conflict is in washington dc the only like place most, that's controversial is yes. in washington dc i mean yeah. and, and so, you know, politicians are often afraid of their own shadows and yeah. they like to use issues as a wedge where you, whether you're talking about immigration or abortion for example nobody really wants to fix anything because they use it for fundraising they use it as a wedge for years you've been told by democrats they're going to legalize cannabis they yeah. had every opportunity to and have they done it yet no they have not i don't understand them um, i am for descheduling that was what that's what the states reform act does the states reform mm -hmm. act deschedules cannabis and allows states to decide whether they want just CBD, whether they want medical, whether they want full recreational, and it gives states the power to decide for themselves and not the federal government. Right. Now, obviously, we all know that rescheduling is in the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, it's not the best scenario, but it's better than nothing mm -hmm. happening at all. So it's a step. It's a if step, it gets right? rescheduled this year, which maybe it'll, I'm guessing it'll happen like 30 days before the election, right? It's going to be used okay. as a political pawn. Uh, it shouldn't be, but I imagine it will be. Um, but rescheduling, I full wholeheartedly support. It's not ideal, but it's better than what we have today. And at least we can get the ball rolling. My understanding is 280E issues go away with rescheduling. Yeah. You know, all those things that a lot of the immediate problems, especially with legal businesses operating in a legal manner, um, a lot of those issues go away. So that's a great first step. And I fully support it. I don't care who does it, whether it's Biden or Trump, it's something yeah. that that I also support. And I hope it gets done sooner rather than later. Do so you, you see do ahead. you see rescheduling as that first incremental step in the process? Like ultimately that will lead to descheduling or some think, sort of federal legalization? It's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely the first step. I mean, we just saw a, a study come out or a report come out or a statement come out from a Republican study committee or Republican caucus that doesn't support safe banking. I'm, I'm just thinking, yes. myself, I can't, I, I just... I don't understand. Uh, we don't need to, we need to move forward, not backwards. We need to go with where the country is or your state, which is why I like the States Reform Act. It's federalism. It puts states yeah. in charge. States are in the driver's seat. They don't take orders from the federal government. They do what they feel is the right thing to do for their people. Um, but it is better than having it as a schedule one substance. I mean, I, yeah, I have yes. talked to so many people that have so many harrowing stories. Um, this at least gets us moving in the right direction and pri provides significant relief. We've seen what's going on in the market. We've seen 
businesses fire a lot of employees over the last year and a half or so. The industry is really struggling, but the people yeah. are struggling too. And we don't want them to get it from the black market. They're using it. I mean, I can walk down certain streets in Charleston, South Carolina, right behind me, and you can smell it. It's on the street. Uh, I talked to um, airport security. It's being shipped in from other states. We want to make sure that if people are using that, it's safe, that it's legal and it's taxed. And right. that we're not getting fentanyl laced drugs like fentanyl laced cannabis, for example. I didn't even know what fentanyl was 10 years ago, but last year I knew two people alone that died from fentanyl overdoses. Yeah. So I just, you know, we want to work smarter, not harder, use a lot of common sense, have certain safety regulations in place. That's what, again, I'm, I, it's my baby, States Reform Act has these regulations in place so it's not marketed to children, not wrapped like candy. I mean, they're just all these really important measures we need to take to also protect our communities at the same time and be responsible about it. So what do you think it's going to take to get this across the line? Like you've said, rescheduling, that's great. Um, you think it may happen 30 days before the I'm election. Guessing. I would yeah. have bet that's my, that's what I would bet. But. Yeah. And I, I think as well, like if the Dems want to get in front of this, most mm -hmm. democratic voters, you know, tend to maybe vote online. Do they start it maybe before 30 days? No one really knows, but do a lot of legislators have any contact or conversations with the DEA? Like, how does that work? Uh, well, certainly we have the ability and as members of Congress to meet with different leaders of different agencies at various levels. In fact, I had a call with the secretary of the uh, Veterans Affairs uh, today. So, I mean, okay. we do have conversations and have access to folks. I don't know what other members do. Some members pay attention. Some members are very involved and very active and some are just totally hands off. Some just let their staff handle everything for them. I'm pretty right. hands on. Okay. So uh, I actually read the bills that I will file. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. That, that might be a weird you. thing. Yeah. I mean, honest to God, my, one of my favorite bills is the States Reform Act. It's just such a beautifully written and drafted piece of legislation. But um really proud of what, what we were able to accomplish. I just would like to see it get a vote. But of course, yeah. the other side doesn't want it to get any attention, doesn't want it to get it a vote, give it a vote. Uh, ours on my side don't support cannabis, even though their voters support cannabis. Uh, you know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's not easy right now. And yeah. everyone is um, afraid to move on this. Hmm. Well, I mean, go ahead, Anthony. Sorry. I was going to say, and obviously that, I mean, ideally I would love to see the States Act pass as, I mean, I've read into a lot of it. It's probably the most comprehensive one out there, especially as it relates to the CSA and the CSA really is the root of the problem for yeah. the plant. Um, safe has been back in the news now um, that uh, Schumer has been pushing now that the government's been funded. He said that that would be top of mind come or next. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's got the sponsors. Do you see safe getting over the line this year um, or just constantly back, bogged down in this quagmire that we've been in for the last 10 years? Um, we'll with say, the bill? I would okay. love, I mean, obviously I support safe hundred percent. I would love mm -hmm. to see Schumer move it forward. The question is what does Mike Johnson do? What does Speaker Johnson yes. do? Yeah. Um, for I can tell you that Republicans that represent purple districts overwhelmingly support safe and then some. And so if Republicans want to keep the House, it's a good bill to have on the floor. Conservatives can vote no all day long. The rest of us can vote for our districts, which would be to support safe. And that there are the vo there are votes in the House to pass safe. It's just a matter yeah. of what the leadership will allow to the floor. Um, I overwhelmingly support it, as do a number of of Republicans that represent um, purple swingish kind of districts like ours. Do you think that enough people, A, don't want this to pass or B, they're just unaware of the cannabis story? Because right now this industry employs as many as 500,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. In the event that we receive uh, rescheduling, you could have another 100,000 jobs basically added to the overall industry. So as you said, this is something that we could tax, which states badly need right now. And it is a big economic engine. And then you talk about, you know, President Biden's State of the Union address, mm -hmm. all the topics that he discussed on social media, they got some interest, but the topic of cannabis outweighed a lot of those other topics by 10 times. So is the conversation being brought up enough? Are people aware and educated enough on where the industry is today and what it uh, potentially could present uh, for I don't the think economy? Member, I, I don't think members of Congress are educated enough. And, right. you know, and I, I think my, part of my frustration is the stubborn nature of some members where they just don't want to hear the facts. Mm. 
They don't want to yeah. hear the truth. They don't want to hear, like in the Journal of American Medicine, for years now has had multiple studies say that if you just have one dispensary in one state, the rate of opioid addiction is significantly reduced. The rate of opioid opioid morbidity related to opioid overdoses is significantly reduced. Yeah. I mean, they don't they 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 don't want to. They're they're too stubborn and set in their ways, and they're afraid to be primaried. I remember last cycle two years ago, the first ad they did on me was an anti-cannabis ad. Guess what? My district supports cannabis. I mean, yeah. read the room, right? That's where that's where people are, and um, <laughs> there's just a lot of fear, and then there's fear mongering. But it's it, it's going to take overwhelming communication with your members of Congress. We're good. You don't need to call my office, <laughs> but right. call other offices that are not there yet. And we even have people who are pretending to be cannabis people, people in the cannabis caucus or whatever, yeah. that don't support the States Reform Act, haven't signed on to that bill, um, have tried to prevent it from getting any uh, recognition or votes. I mean, you know, so there are even forces within our, our party or both parties that we just, we work against each other, even though we supposedly we all support cannabis, right? There's a lot of that goes on. And it's, a lot of it's just ego and it's stupid, like really asinine. <sighs> So we're in an election year. Um, mm. Florida, um, the Florida Supreme Court just put just passed the adult use initiative being on the ballot in November. A lot of people are speculating that Trump is going to have to vote yes or no on that um, when he casts his ballot in the state. Um, have you spoken to Trump um, in regards to cannabis? Not specifically, large. not specifically about cannabis, but I know in reading some of his previous comments in in previous years that he has supported medical. That's where yes. you know he has drawn support. So I don't see rescheduling as being an issue, whether it's Joe Biden or Donald Trump as president. It seems yeah, like okay. both presidents support a rescheduling to schedule three would presumably be the answer. I can't speak for him, but I haven't spoken specifically with him. I just know in previous public comments that he's made, it sounded like medical was something that he supported, which is by and far better than anybody else has yeah. done, Republican or Democrat, because they've done yeah. nothing, nothing. Yeah. yeah. This is the TDR Trade of Black podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales, on with Anthony Vrell and Congresswoman Nancy Mace. Thank you again for taking the time. You brought up mm -hmm. Florida. You haven't gotten a chance to speak to him, but if you do and when you get a chance to speak to him, what will you advise him on when a top if the conversation of cannabis gets brought up? States Reform Act. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that, that's an easy, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's such a good bill. Obviously, I'm biased towards it, but when you look at other bills that are out there, it has extremely low excise tax because we've seen states that have overtaxed it, taxing it much greater than alcohol. Businesses are going broke. But when you have a really low tax rate and then when you allow states to be in their driver's seat, you don't force feed a certain rule or regulation or law down the throats of states. States can then decide how they want to handle cannabis. It gives more freedom, I think, to the people, more freedom to states because not every state is the same. Medicals in Florida, but it's not in South Carolina. We got it. Eventually, we got to get there. But um, but every state's different and every every law enforcement agency organization is different at the state and the local level. So what mm -hmm. Oregon does is probably not what South Carolina does. South Carolina's medical cannabis bill at the state level is the most conservative medical cannabis bill in the country. Um, that's the way it has to be in order to, to move forward. And so um, I think every state's different, but I would I'll clearly pitch him on States Reform Act because I feel that is the best way forward where states get to be in a driver's seat. And you have, you know, commerce is not an issue. Uh, 280E is not an issue. Banking is fine. It just, it solves yeah. all the problems, mm -hmm. all the problems. Yeah. So, so 2022, I understand when the state, Q1, I think 2022 in the States Reform Act, it had some momentum. There were names, and you mentioned jobs. There were names such as Amazon and the Koch brothers um, were backing it. Amazon mm -hmm. said, we're getting behind this, not because we want to sell cannabis, but because mm -hmm. it opens up our job pool overall for domestic jobs because people should not be denied jobs that right. want to actually use a plant. Are right. those voices still in the room or are they still backing the cause? It's or the is same that bill. Kind of so we, we filed it last year again because we're in a new session. It's the same bill. Nothing has changed. I don't really expect support for it to shift. Um, I would like to see us get more support. But right now, I mean, this has been... Um, uh, a Congress that has not been functioning as well as maybe other Congresses and a lot of not a lot of things have gotten done. In fact, we led one of the worst debt ceiling bills in the history of the country, adding 50 trillion dollars of debt. We're wasting a lot of money spending on things we shouldn't be. Um, and uh, there's a lot of frustration. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, yeah. we won't get into that. Mm -hmm. I won't get into that. I said, sorry. My yeah. apologies. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. But, um, you know, so for me, it's just my frustration is, you know, the, the very few things we've gotten across the finish line. I like to do, I like to go, I want to be busy. Let's, let's be doing things and let's be working and moving forward. Stage reform act is a real easy one, but uh, a lot of folks in my party are are afraid Mm. of cannabis. Well, judging by the response here in our, uh, (laughs) Uh, people watching this right now, they love the support that you're providing. Nancy mm-hmm. Mace for president. So uh, we're getting a lot of positive reaction right now. So, 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 so that's a pretty powerful statement you just made with the members of your party, mostly being, we'll say anti-cannabis. Do you think that this does that we don't, do you think that it's a function of them aging out and us renewing the pool of, of politicians or like what is that? Is, is that perception of the plan ever going to change? I do think yeah. there's some generational changes. I do think so. But, you know, my thought is with people who don't believe it is to polar districts. Find yeah. out how your voters and your constituents really feel about it. Put it on the ballot. Every state should allow it on the yeah. ballot so that people can decide. And I think you'll see it overwhelmingly. People will support cannabis. Just yeah. look, give the people the voice and and follow that voice but i do think there's some generational differences not all there are there's some older members that support cannabis so uh you know so i don't want to just criticize that but i just think it's this this mindset that prohibition works and prohibition does not work governor yunkin governor yunkin shocked us all last week i mean the bill in virginia had bipartisan support and then he vetoed it and everybody was kind of like just looking at the sky like what's going on um, cannabis is borderline. It's pretty much legal in Virginia already. A, a legalized, regulated. I can't market. believe he did that, especially in our state. I like. What do you like? Right. I, I don't understand the method behind the madness here because this is what the people want. Do it in a responsible manner yeah. that protects our children. Again, states reform act. Um, th- th- there's a way to go about it in a responsible way. Um, this is what the people want, especially if you're in a purple state or a purple district. It's it's mind boggling to me that that's what would happen. It doesn't make any, the math doesn't add up for me. I don't, I yeah, really no. don't understand it. Do you think rescheduling helps a lot of these bills to actually pass and come into law like the States Act and Safe Banking Act? I do. I do think it, it helps move things along um, because otherwise it, something needs to happen. I mean, yeah. nothing yeah. has happened. Something needs to happen. Um, I don't want it to be 20 years. I don't want to, rescheduling to happen. And then we wait 20 years to do something else. That's not right either. Right. But rescheduling does solve a lot of issues, especially 280E. So that is a, a complaint that we get and we hear a lot of, a lot about. But that is movement we otherwise would not get. And this movement that I support, I don't care who does it. So it, it needs to happen. And then we can work on what is the next step. Mm-hmm. Somebody actually had a question pertaining to South Carolina, which is our next question. So in the event federal uh, cannabis is rescheduled, what are the, I guess, strategic plans to advance cannabis reform in your state, South Carolina? Well, uh, that would be up to state lawmakers and the governor on what that would look like, what the next step would be. I don't know how the bill that Senator Tom Davis has been working on for eight years. I don't know how that bill would be impacted. I would imagine that it would need to be modified to meet uh, whatever is included in schedule in rescheduling. Um, I, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the bill because I know it's been changed a couple of times since I was in the state house. But that would be the first step is to go to state lawmakers who who uh, support that medical cannabis bill and then figuring out what needs to happen as a next step for the state of South Carolina. Gotcha. How can our how can our how can our audience get involved with supporting the states act? Is it calling their local representatives? How how can they get their voice involved in creating momentum for the States Act. Calling their members of Congress, writing their members of Congress, emailing their members of Congress, and asking them to co-sponsor the bill, to get on the bill. If they support cannabis, it's very responsible. It allows states to control it. There are are safeguards put in for children. There are safeguards and certain uh, exceptions put in there for people that have certain illnesses, including terminal illness, sickle cell, uh, chronic pain, et cetera. There are all these great things. There are things for veterans in there. There are things for distressed small businesses. Uh, you know, in putting the hands and the power back into the people's hands um, yeah. is really a good thing. And so they need to call their members of Congress and and ask them to get on, have their friends call. The more people that call and communicate with their members of Congress, the more attention the bill, the legislation will get and the more support it will get. Get into action, right? Yeah. Have to. I want to focus on some of your initiatives, including the Cure Act that you're sponsoring with Congressman Jamie Raskin, which would allow former cannabis users to get federal jobs, which 
Uh, I got to admit, this really grabbed my attention. So uh, where did the idea come from? Well, Jamie and I actually, we've, we've worked on a couple of different bills. I do a lot of uh, civil rights work with, with Jamie as well. And we were both uh, led the civil rights subcommittee and oversight last session. He's been a very good partner on civil liberties type of issues. And this is another one. This is another in the bank of our portfolio of cannabis bills and civil liberties bills that I've worked on. There's no reason for us to discriminate against workers at all. And in fact, as you all mentioned earlier, there are a lot of businesses, big businesses who could really could benefit from that kind of from policy as well. But for federal workers, they shouldn't be discriminated against in that regard. I also think that they should be able to, just like anything else, they should be able to have access in the same kind of jobs, even high security jobs, top security yeah. jobs. Um, they're no different than anybody else. Hmm. With clear, with, with, with care clearing committee, is it now in Speaker Johnson's hands? To bring uh, it to if, a, if to it's bring it to a floor vote? not come to the floor, it's just sitting in a door somewhere. Okay. Another question and we have actually. Floor, it'd be great yeah. if it came to the floor. Yes. But again, I, I don't understand the controversy because to me, it's yeah. not controversial. I go back to polling. I go back to data and I go back to the will of the people. I speak all over the country at, at different cannabis uh, conventions. And every time I go somewhere, whether I'm in Austin, Texas or Miami, Florida, wherever, I run into people from bright red South Carolina who are working on the issue, who have retail locations, they're ready to open up shop. They've got land they want to farm on and grow and they're ready. And it's just, you know, it's just another issue where the people, the will of the people is being ignored. Yeah. It's your, you couldn't be more right because it is mm -hmm. completely mind boggling to most why we cannot get sensible cannabis reform yeah. passed. Nobody's asking for widespread cannabis use yeah. in public. It's mm -hmm. all, everything that's been put forward is sensible. And I right. mean, it makes sense, especially when you draw conclusions from HHS, compare mm -hmm. it to alcohol. It has mm -hmm. medicinal benefits. Like there's no reason why these roadblocks yeah. should still be in place and it treated as a schedule one via the CSA. Yeah. Well, I don't want to walk down the street and smell it everywhere either. I not, mean, I, not, why, neither do I. That's why yeah. you need responsible regulations. And I, I, there are certain streets, like I said, in Charleston downtown, I walk down, you can smell it. I mean, it's here. Correct. It's not legal, but it would be better to regulate it and to tax it and to do it in a way that keeps our communities safe. I mean, there's yeah, no yes. reason to have it any other way. There's no reason for for folks to be shipping it in, in illegally, 80 pounds a suitcase, which is what they're doing. Right. I mean, there's so much that comes through our airport every single day. It's happening. It's here. We need to regulate it in a safe way, keep our kids safe. I've got two teenage kids. I know what the realities are. I know yep. about kids coming to school every day that are that are vaping or that are are getting high off of yeah. marijuana and shouldn't be. I mean, so having sensible education, sensible regulations, so that it's not on the street the really the bad stuff too. You know, we want to protect our kids. And so like I so, can so walk speaking down. so speaking mm -hmm. of minors, uh I don't want to say getting access, but being able mm -hmm. to obtain access it's to, very easy. Into to intoxicating hemp products. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that as it relates to the regulated industry? It's very easy uh, to get a hold yeah. of those products. Um, yeah. You know, I've got teenage kids. I hear the stories. I, I see the news reports. Uh, my, my kids and I have very open and honest conversations about who's doing mm -hmm. what, where they're doing it at school or after school or before school. Um, you know, and so it's... Uh, it's a it's problematic, which is why yeah. again, and I go back to education. I go back to the States Reform Act, which has very specific regulations and controls in there to protect our children. Because right yeah. now, I mean, there just there aren't any in South Carolina with regards to that. Um, you know, we've talked about this in the past: incremental changes versus comprehensive. I think comprehensive approach is what's stalling a lot of this stuff yes. in the past. So, but just give us something, right? And I think if the first step is rescheduling, I think that's a big step in the right direction. But I think. A lot of the stuff that you outline as far as education, it's like we're not having, we're asking it everything fixed overnight. This is just mm -hmm. small steps, but this would be a giant step in the right direction. And I think on behalf of the entire cannabis community, this is something that's badly needed as we've been watching this closely. Like, I think it's been over 10 years since safe banking was originally introduced, was it not? It's ridiculous. As innovative as the United <clears throat> States of America is, as smart as we are, as well-funded as we are, and we just do this. We do this with everything. I mean, yeah. every issue we we do this, and yeah. um, it, it's unfortunate. But you know, to me, it's small parts, big difference. Yeah. So I like bills that are limited in nature that can that we can then pass the floor. Like it's the more like you said, the more comprehensive and bigger bill they are, much more difficult. To me, safe banking is so easy. 
the fact we can't do it, even when there have been Democrat super majorities and it's not it's not getting done. I just, well, I think the thing we learn here today, and I think it's something that we've been speculating for quite some time, mm -hmm. it's a generational thing is what mm -hmm. I'm seeing and hearing. But we've been used to waiting for a long time. Uh, I want to go back to the Cure Act. One of our viewers, Tom Angel from Marijuana Moment, who's got a great publication, writes, now that Cure Act has cleared committee, what are the chances of Speaker right. Johnson bringing it up for a floor vote? Yeah. Did I get that wrong as far as the name, Anthony? It's a I asked that question. Oh, you did. Sorry. My apologies. I missed a, that. Yep. <clears throat> uh, great right. question. I doubt it comes to the floor this year, unfortunately. Okay. Um, all right. I think that pretty much wraps things up. Is there anything else you want to add? I think I was going to ask one thing. If we had this conversation a year from now, uh, where do you think we are as far as rescheduling, descheduling, safe banking? We had this conversation a year from now. I think we're re I think rescheduling happens, but I mean, I don't have a crystal ball. I wish I could predict the future, but I think the odds are better than 50% that rescheduling does happen. If it's going to happen, it should happen this year. It's an election year. Uh, I could see it being used as an election issue for certain candidates in certain races for president, for example. I think it'll come up yeah. but uh, to rally the vote uh, towards November, which is why I'm saying I'm guessing it'll happen in October. But that's just my that's my guess. We'll hmm. see. All right. It's a big takeaway. Listen, we're going to actually be in Washington next Wednesday. So hopefully we uh, run into you at Capitol Hill if you're there. But uh, yeah. I'm stop by. Yeah, we'll be swinging down uh, in the hallways and hopefully get a chance to speak to you and a few others, but just uh, trying to, uh, you know, progress the conversation a little bit more and get through to more people like yourselves. But uh, mm -hmm. again, on behalf of Anthony and I, and especially all the audience here at TDR, we appreciate you uh, taking the time to catch up with us here today. Of course, anytime. And thanks for thanks for talking about this. I'm extremely passionate about it, as you can imagine, and appreciate the support on States Reform Act. Yeah, and appreciate the story and the share. Uh, a lot yeah. of people appreciated the honesty. So yeah. thanks again, Nancy. And, uh, you know, uh, God bless. And uh, we'll be in touch with you uh, soon, okay? Yeah, thanks, guys. All right, Thank thanks, you. All right, so <clears throat> that was a great interview. Need to that, was say, that was good. It's Lots frustrating, though. It's frustrating, though, that we keep talking about how everything with cannabis makes sense, but the government can't get anything done. What's the biggest thing you learned in that podcast? My biggest takeaway is everything that we thought is true is true, which is the fact that it's a generational thing. That's what it stems to, right? She's probably one of the more knowledgeable people on the Hill, um, just from what everything that she said um, pertaining to the sector, pertaining to the legislation. Obviously, a lot of the bills were hers. Yeah. But I mean, it's nice to see someone with that, with that perspective, especially coming from the uh, Republican side of the aisle. Yeah. Apologies for, I mean, yeah. Apologies for duplicating your question too. I was uh, busy listening. No problem. I mean, yeah, she said, it's a, she said it's potentially in a drawer somewhere, which uh, hopefully cure, cure states safe. We need something. Yeah. Um, I want to make this clear too. Like she said, this is just a guess. I don't want people to run off with this thinking it's going to be 30 days before the actual election date of rescheduling. That's just a guess. And her thought is it's just leverage for whatever political party obviously wants to get behind this and obviously yeah. generate votes. <clears throat> but, you know, I've had other people talk about, you know, if this is a democratic side, <clears throat> excuse me, that, um, you know, online voting could take place and this could be well before the 30 days. Again, no one knows, but I really wanted to push the idea of what kind of conversation and communication a lot of these legislators have with the DEA, which they have some, but uh, they're holding their cards. Well, they've got power. Closely. Yeah, they, of course. they've got power. If they wanted they, they, they can request a formal inquiry um, into the agencies. The agency doesn't have to. I mean, the agency has to respond. Yeah. They don't have to grant them. Um, their formal request, but I mean, they've got, they, they've, they've got some power and insight into the inner workings of the agencies in, uh, in Washington. I think it's great too, that if we had this conversation a year from now, safe and rescheduling, she thinks is going to happen. So, um, we just hope it's a lot sooner, but here we are still waiting, but at least I feel yeah. when we have these conversations like this, especially on a podcast platform like this, we're getting more conversations with the right people to get a better understanding of, uh, what the pathway forward is. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, safe will be great. Rescheduling will be great. For anybody that's not educated on the States Act, I recommend reading into it. Um, it's probably one of the better pieces of legislation around the sector um, that's been written. Um, and I mean, hopefully it does get some momentum if we get one of these incremental steps forward. Yeah. Looks like we went suit shopping together. Where'd you get your blazer, yeah. buddy? Uh, this is Armani. Oh, nice so. jacket there. 
I don't have an Armani. It's nice, but it's not an Armani. But uh, listen, I appreciate obviously everybody logging on here today and uh, listening to the podcast. Uh, as again, uh, smash that like button, leave lots of comments. We still have communications through email through Nancy and her team. So if there's any questions that you want us to ask that we may have missed, please leave comments below. Because as I said before here on YouTube, the more comments and the more likes that we get, the better opportunity this has to go viral. And let's face it, we want this conversation to go viral to bring more wellness. So we appreciate obviously the smash likings and as well, the comments that we're leaving behind. Also, what a day on the market, $400 million in stock traded for Canopy. Is that correct? It was Canopy kicked ass. Oh man, I was reading a marijuana, marijuana stock traders actually <laughs> called that thing perfectly. Uh, today he said it gets above 10. It's going to crank higher and squeeze and he couldn't have been more right. Yeah. Uh, nothing makes sense in this industry right now. You get the news out of Florida and who moves cannabis companies out of Canada, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's more so excise tax news. Um, I know that we're going to get something out of Ottawa on the 18th, um, of this month, Germany, people might be front running. And I mean, truly was up 140% going into yesterday. Yeah. Uh, air, air popped, consortium popped. Um, it's like, like, we, like we've been saying, I mean, Florida rec is great. It ain't coming until May, 2025, best yeah. case scenario, a year yeah. from now. Yeah. Um, I think schedule three, we start to get the meteoric moves in U.S. cannabis names. And if anything, the appreciation that's going on right now in Canadian LPs, that money's going to have to rotate somewhere sooner or later. Gives you an and idea. It's probably going to rotate into the U.S. names. April you 16th an idea. for Canada. I was I was incorrect. Not April 18th. <clears throat> April 16th. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Darren Weiss, president of Verano. I thought this was interesting in a LinkedIn post. The fact that the large Florida operators traded down on one of the biggest catalysts the cannabis industry has ever seen while the Canadian LPs traded up significantly tells you everything you need to know about the absurd capital markets twilight zone we live in. Inaction or legislative fixtures is value destructive for shareholders, employees, and the U.S. economy is what he posted actually eight hours ago on LinkedIn. So I saw it. Uh, I retweeted it. I retweeted it. <clears throat> some frustrations, um, I think, amongst some of the uh, you know executives with some of the Florida players. But um, I mean, it's fine. It's the market's going to do what the market's going to do. I said it earlier. The market can stay more. The market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. Yeah. I mean, no matter what I say, no matter what Darren says, capital will find its way into the MSOs when it damn well pleases, yeah. and it's going to find its way into the MSOs if Nancy's correct or Congresswoman Mace is correct. If we get safe and we get re, we get rescheduling, capital's coming. Like it's the the the, the stage is set. Um, she had some I, I don't think I, I don't think it needs to be in and in, in either either or. Um, it can be both. Yeah, some polarizing numbers out of South Carolina. Would you say the approval for medical is north of seventy five percent? And is it fifty three? People, people in this country want cannabis. Yes. It, cannabis is socially acceptable. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, everybody else with the exception of very few politicians right now wouldn't be behind this and wouldn't be saying the C word out loud if it wasn't socially acceptable by their constituents. Yep. It is. I mean, it's it, it's out of the bag. Anthony Cogniglio, good to see you, sir. Air is up 350% from one year ago. That was when wow. I was yelling. It was at 70 cents. This makes absolutely no sense. Yep. Christopher Brady, what kind of toilet paper is this? It's Armani. <laughs> SNDL with another 52 week high as well, up about 23%. Uh, quick reminder, uh, we're going to probably have Dan, the chart man back on, on Friday in our live stream. We're going to have to dive into a lot of the movement here this week. We've also reached out to Zach George, CEO of SNDL. Keep you posted on whether or not he can join us on Friday. You reached out to him, right? I reached out to him, yes. I'll have confirmation by, uh, I think by end of day tomorrow if he's going to join us on Friday. Yeah. Um, if he does, it'll be to talk Florida, Certera, and their uh, exposure um, to the Florida market and the United States at large. Yeah. Um, as usual, don't forget, log on to thedalesreport.com. Next week, as we said in the lower thirds right there, we're kicking off our Washington, D.C. special. Next Wednesday, we will be there. Uh, we'll have to figure out what our live stream. We're going to go live, obviously, on Monday and Friday of next week. We'll probably be on Capitol Hill. 
Uh, we might be might be remote, but regardless of the production quality, we want to get uh, some messaging out to you guys. But we'll keep you posted next week on whether or not we're going to be doing a live stream because I know we're going to be busy in the hallways throughout the day in Washington, which is going to be. This gives you an idea of what kind of experience and what we're going to learn next week, just based on these 25 or 30 minutes that we spoke with Nancy, but lots to learn. But the most important thing is providing content for you, the followers, and we would not be here without you. So again, thanks for the support. And as I said, log on to the dalesreport.com and subscribe to our daily newsletter, the baked in newsletter. We basically break down all the price move that's happened the last 24 hours and our big takeaways of what you can anticipate moving forward in the meantime enjoy the rest of your afternoon and uh we will check back in with you on friday same talk soon take care hey everyone thanks for watching and if you want to learn more about the emerging industries that we cover then leave a comment below and let us know who you want us to interview the questions you want asked and the information that you want to learn we want to hear from you as usual click on that bell for all notifications to get the latest information Share this video with your network and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.